Hello everyone, I am Risha and this is For the Love of Classics. Welcome back to another reading vlog. I think it's going to be my first reading vlog for the year 2021. I haven't done a lot of reading. I have been reading one book since the year started and that book is An American Brat by Babsi Sidwa. I'm now just left with 30-40 pages in this book. I'm on page number 259 and this is a 300 page long book. Babsi Sidwa is a Pakistani American writer. She has written a number of books and her works are pretty well known. This is going to be the first book by Babsi Sedwa which I will be reading. I started reading this on the recommendation of a very dear friend Nashwa. So in this book, uh, we are following this young girl called Feroza and she is 16 years old and she goes to United States of America to visit her uncle Manik who is studying there at MIT. She just goes for a vacation for three months, but during that three months, she and her uncle decide that it's best that she stays in the States so that she can get education there. So she applies to colleges there and she gets accepted in a college in uh, Salt Lake. I hope I'm pronouncing the names correctly. The reason why Manik wants her to study there is because it's a conservative town as compared to the rest of the places he has been to and he thinks that being in a conservative town is the best thing for Feroza. I'm really enjoying this book honestly I wasn't sure how I'll feel about it. I'm finding bits of it very relatable because this young Pakistani girl is moving to a very new place. The way she uh, the way she talks, the way she behaves, the way she thinks is pretty different from an average 16 year old American and the contrast between those two societies and how they come together is pretty fascinating and honestly I can't wait to know what will happen in the end. I read a few reviews about this book on Goodreads which said that the ending did not go anywhere. I can see that coming already because only 40 pages of this book are left and there's no climax point which we have reached so far it's all um, just her experiences it's a very casual story about a girl going to america in the last few chapters she comes back to pakistan for a visit it's christmas time and she has holidays and she decides to visit her family in pakistan and as soon as she lands the first thing her family wants from her is you know for her to settle down to give up her education and uh, get married to a good parsi boy because feroza is a parsi by faith that is such a common concept in our culture i do come from a similar background so it felt very relevant and honest as um, nashwa keeps talking about it you don't find um, the things which we see in our society in books written by Pakistani authors and that's definitely not the case with Babsi Sidwa. Uh, while reading her book I am like yeah that happens, yes this happens. Even though in this book we are following a Parsi family but they are living in Pakistan and this family is experiencing a lot of what we experienced in Pakistan as well. Expecting young girls to settle down, get married before getting their education over with is very common in Pakistan and I'm pretty sure it's also common in other South Asian countries. Feroza has now different ideas. She wants to finish her studies, she wants to graduate and you know start her own career before she gets married and this idea is pretty shocking and foreign to her parents, especially her mother and her grandmothers. It's interesting how Feroza's father doesn't care if she studies or gets married but all the ladies, all the female um, figures in the book want Feroza to settle down. So I'm really enjoying this book and I can't wait to finish it and I'm not sure what book I will read next. I think I might do a poll on my Instagram to see what you guys would suggest. I went to the old bookshop. I have given away three books. Um, I talked about them in my previous video. I either did not like them or I got myself better translations so I 
got rid of three of my books um, and instead I got myself another book from there let me show you guys what book I got so I'm gonna get rid of this book it's in the Wordsworth classics edition I've already read it and I didn't enjoy it the next book I'm getting rid of is the Iliad by Homer because I have a better copy of the Iliad in the Robert Fagel's translation now. The third book I am going to discard is The Red Pony by John Steinbeck. I will not technically be discarding them. I'll be giving them to an old bookshop. And the last book I plan on unhauling is Bonjour Tristesse by Francois Sagan. I got this from House of Prose, an old bookshop in Dubai, so I'm going to now return these back to them. Alright, so I went to House of Prose and I got myself a copy of Prisoners of Geography by Tim Marshall. 10 maps that tell you everything you need to know about global politics. We visited House of Prose, me and my husband together, and we both thought that this sounded interesting. I used to watch a lot of news and I kept myself updated about what was going on around the world, but I feel like in the last year because of how the situation unfolded. I stopped watching the news completely and I feel like a bit cut out from what's going on in the world. There were pros and cons to that. I felt so much more relaxed and um, free of anxiety in the last year because I stopped watching the news. But I also feel like I do want to know what's going on around the world. I felt like this book would get me to understand a bit about what goes on behind all the political drama we see on the news. This is a non-fiction book and it was published in the year 2015 but it is a revised and updated edition of Prisoners of Geography. All leaders are constrained by geography. Their choices are limited by mountains, rivers, seas and concrete. Yes, to follow world events you need to understand people, ideas and movements but if you don't know geography you'll never have the full picture. I really enjoyed studying geography in school so I think I'm going to like it. If you've ever wondered why Putin is so obsessed with Crimea, why the USA was destined to become a global superpower or why China's power base continues to expand ever outwards, the answers are all here. Prisoners of Geography looks at the past, present and future to offer an essential insight into one of the major factors that determines world history. It's time to put the geo back into geopolitics. All right, and this book has an introduction and then there are 10 chapters in the book. The first one is about Russia, then China, USA, Western Europe, Africa, the Middle East, India and Pakistan, Korea and Japan, Latin America and the Arctic. And then it has a conclusion and bibliography and acknowledgements. It's got maps in it as well um, and some really fun quotes before a chapter starts. It's less than 300 pages long so it shouldn't be too hard for a non-fiction. I do plan to read more non-fiction in the year 2021 and I think this book will do the job.
we went out for lunch and afterwards I visited Borders as well. So we have Borders in almost every mall here and I got myself a book. So there's Dubai shopping festival going on and there was a discount on Borders as well. So I got myself a classic. So I was watching the show The Beginning of Everything. It is based on the life of F. Scott Fitzgerald and his wife Zelda and it was a very very dramatic season and i realized that fitzgerald had a very dramatic life i have read the great gatsby and i did not like it because it had a lot of drama and i thought you know no person could really have a life as dramatic as that but he actually did have fitzgerald actually did have a very dramatic life and that makes sense that he wrote about characters and events um, which were pretty turbulent. While I was watching the season I found out that the first book which he wrote was This Side of Paradise and it was an instant success and he became famous because of that book and then later on he decided to write The Great Gatsby and uh, The Beautiful and the Damned which is by the way based on pretty much his own life um, with his wife. So This Side of Paradise was the book which got him famous and I got myself a copy of This Side of Paradise by F. Scott Fitzgerald because because of the show basically. This edition is by Arcturus Publishers and it's such a pretty cover. They have such modern looking covers, the Arcturus Publishers and I really liked it so I got myself the book. Amory Blaine, a wealthy Midwestern boy, set on rejecting his upbringing that actually kind of sounds like Fitzgerald himself. Um, so a wealthy Midwestern boy set on rejecting his upbringing turns his ambitions to the elite society of the East Coast. But as Blaine progresses through a sequence of romantic attachments, the life he longs for continues to elude him. This book is also very short. It's less than 300 pages long. And I think that's a good place to start. Uh, I mean, I've already read The Great Gatsby, but apart from that, I think I should have maybe started from his first book. So, so this is the second book which I have gotten in the year 2020, two books already. All right, so those are the two books which I recently got. And then I also got two books in December, which I never showed you guys. So I'm going to do that and I'm super excited about those editions because they are stunning. So the first book which I want to show you guys is Silas Marner by George Eliot. And the second one is The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. George Eliot is one of my favorite authors of all time and I wanted to get a copy of Silas Marner but I wanted a really cute one and I guess the story in Silas Marner isn't cute so all the editions which I found showed some really weird covers so I did not want it to buy them and I was avoiding getting the book because I was looking for a cuter copy and then I saw this and I loved it because first yellow is my favorite color. The book is all yellow. It has these black edged papers. It has this cartoon on the cover and I believe these are by Penguin Random House. These editions are available at WH Smith. Step back to the time of Queen Victoria and open a yellow back. Yellow backs were low priced entertaining books sold through WH Smith 
book stalls and railway stations during the 19th century. To celebrate their 225th anniversary, W.H. Smith has recreated these special editions of popular classics in association with vintage classics. And I love them. I wish I can just buy all of the available books in these editions. Silas Marner lives a friendless and isolated existence near the country village of Revioli, Revlo, the village of Ravlo, hoarding his gold. One night his fortune is stolen and Silas loses everything he holds dear. But then the golden-haired child Epi appears in his home and Silas begins to reform bonds of faith and human connectedness that he once renounced forever. First published in 1861, George Eliot's tale of redemption is also a loving portrait of a long-lost rural way of life. Isn't it stunning? All right. And then the second book which I got in the same edition is The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. Um, another really cute cover. A young governess is sent to a great country house to care for two orphaned children. To begin with, Flora and Miles seem to be model pupils, but gradually the governess starts to suspect that something is very wrong with them. As she sets out to uncover the corrupt secrets of the house, she becomes more and more convinced that something evil is watching her. First published in 1898, Henry James' ghost story still retains its power to fascinate and appall. It is accompanied in this edition by three other haunting tales, The Romance of Certain Old Clothes, The Friends of the Friends, and The Jolly Corner. So I did not know that it also had three other tales in it. I'm happy that it does because the more the merrier. So I'm really happy about these books and yep. So what I'm going to do now is do some work. I have to do some reporting which I've never done before so it's going to be my first time doing it but I'm excited about that and I also need to get some work done on my laptop um, and then cook dinner and I'll probably be finishing this book in American Brat today because I think it's time. So I bought in a bigger pot, uh, which I got just in case I needed one. And I think I've already made such a mess. I should have put something down before I started working.
one more plant and I have the spot which I'm going to plant it in and let's see how it goes. So I'm done potting the plants. I'm not sure whether I did a good job. I will know after a couple of days or maybe a week whether these plants survive or whether they die. This was the first time I was doing it so I had just watched a few videos on YouTube to get to know how it was done. I also hung a few plants uh, from my ceiling. So these are the plants and I chose to put up fake plants because otherwise I would never have been able to water them. They look really good. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I'm now going to do some quick cooking and then sit down and get down to work. Hello everyone, uh, it's now two days since I last talked to you guys on this vlog. I finished reading An American Brat by Babsi Sidwa yesterday night. I have decided to give this book either a 3.5 star rating or a 4 star rating. I really liked the book because I found it really relatable. Especially during the second half of the book, I found as Feroza grows up, she struggles and deals with things which are very prevalent in the social circle, in the culture of a South Asian household. Feroza decides to stay in America. She thinks she has changed so much 
uh, that it will not be possible for her to go back to Pakistan. She has evolved so much as a person that she will not be able to go back to Pakistan and live with the same people. Because of the changes America has brought in her personality, there's usually an ongoing debate in Pakistan about why people want to leave Pakistan, go outside, and then why they never want to come back. Babsi Sidwa basically has a little bit of that debate going on, especially towards the end of the book. And I really liked those parts and I've highlighted a lot of that. However comforting the interaction of family and friends was, they would fritter away her hours in activities she had grown away from and their habitual meddling would never allow her control over her life. She realized now that the convenience provided by servants bought its own baggage of responsibilities, a drain on her time she could do without. The technology of the West kept one sufficient unto oneself without the necessity of intrusive human contact. Feroza knew her thoughts would be considered despicable and selfish were she to voice them at home. But it was a selfishness sanctioned by the values of the prosperous new world in which she wished to dwell. Feroza knew she had changed and the life of her friends there had also changed, taken a different direction from hers. Their preoccupation with children and servants and their concern with clothes and furnishings did not interest her. Neither did the endless round of parties that followed their parents' mode of hospitality. Although the sense of dislocation of not belonging was more acute in America, she felt it would be more tolerable because it was shared by thousands of newcomers like herself. Um, so I really liked when she talked about this problem and this issue. And then we also see her uncle getting married and how his married life is basically such a disaster because the only reason he gets married is because he has to get married to a Parsi uh, woman. The personalities of both these people don't match and we see how that takes a toll on their marriage as years pass as they have kids. I felt like it was a good thing that I stepped away from classics for a bit and this was definitely a good book to do that. I really hope I'm in focus because the last footage I checked I wasn't in the best focus. Uh, Vakas is currently reading Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. This is a non-fiction. It's a memoir by the creator of Nike and he's on page number 22. So let's see what he feels about this. I on the other hand am not sure what book I want to read next. I, I think I want to read a book which has a free audiobook available somewhere. So that will help me speed up my reading. Uh, but I am going to search for a book now. Pick a couple of books from my shelves which I'm interested in reading and then I'm going to put a poll on my Instagram and we'll see what you guys suggest I read next and we'll go from there. I do have a few chores planned for the day so I might be doing that and once the book is final from the poll I'll start reading it.
Hello guys, so it's the next day. I did a poll on my Instagram asking you guys which book should I read. The highest vote was for New Grub Street by George Gissing. I guess you guys expect me to read classics because it is the name of my channel. But I really wanted to read The Butchering Art by Lindsay Fitzharris. So I've bought the book with me because I came out today planning to go to some secluded place to read. Instead, I drove to Global Village. So I'm going to be taking this book with me. I'll see if I can find some nice spot. I do want to enjoy the rest of what Global Village has to offer as well. I'll take the book with me as well because I do plan to read a bit. So we also went for a hike and I used to go on hikes a lot in Pakistan. But I haven't been to any hikes in Dubai or in the UAE. I've been keeping an eye out and searching for groups of people who go for hikes here. And I found one. They are called Dubai Walkies. And we went on a hike with them. Uh, it was a group of around 20 to 30 people. They are just some hiking enthusiasts. Nothing formal. So we went on a hike to Fossil Rock. It is a 30 minute drive from Dubai to Sharjah. The entire hike was around three and a half hours long. We went to see the sunrise and it was absolutely amazing. We had an amazing time there um, and I can't wait to go on more hikes with them. So I'm going to be inserting footage of our hiking trip. I hope you guys enjoy watching it as much as I enjoyed hiking.
and I think I will probably be ending this vlog today here because it's been a very long one. I will continue reading The Butchering Art by Lindsay Fitzharris. I've been meaning to read this book ever since I got it. It's about the history of medicine in the Victorian era. I'm absolutely fascinated by the idea of medicine in the Victorian era and I think this is going to be such an amazing read so wish me luck. Uh, till then stay safe everyone and happy reading. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!